Hey everyone. So now that external cargo is fixed, I figured it was time to do a little mission with it. So we're here on the search and rescue server and basically what we're doing today is a resupply mission. So this server has an abundance of AI units stranded all over the place and the primary goal here is to rescue them by picking them up and bringing them back to one of several hospitals around the map. But there are a couple of secondary objectives and ways to play. So the hospitals have two limitations. One of them is capacity and the other is supplies. Supplies are required to treat the patients in order for them to be released, and capacity dictates the number of patients that the hospital can hold at any given time. So if they run out of supplies, you can drop patients off and they can be accepted up to the limit, but they can't be treated. And then once the hospital is full, you have two options. You can either transport some of those patients from the full hospital to one that has more capacity, that has room for new patients, or you can do a resupply mission by flying to one of the factories on the map, picking up supplies either internally or externally, and bringing them back to the hospital so that it can begin to treat patients again. And that's what we're doing today. Our flight today is 70 kilometers through a mountain pass to a factory where we're going to pick up just shy of 9,000 pounds, 4,000 kilograms worth of cargo, and then we're going to sling that back, the 70 kilometers back through the mountains, to resupply a hospital. Now, something else to note for this mission was that I recorded this entirely in virtual reality. So just a few months ago, I picked up a Valve Index for VR, and it has really become my preferred way to play. I've largely tried to avoid using my VR footage in my videos because I know it's not as watchable as the 2D stuff. So let's consider this one an experiment. So I recorded the flight in VR as I flew in first person. And then I went back afterwards and watched the track file on my monitor instead and recorded as much of that as I was able to before it got out of sync with what really happened. I synced both of these tracks up in my editor and I've basically been working with it as a multicam or multi-angle video. So I'll be alternating back and forth between the internal VR cam and the external 2D or flat screen cam that looks more like you're used to. So I would definitely love some feedback on whether or not the VR footage is watchable enough to use for videos like this, or whether I should just stick to the 2D flat screen content only. I have no intentions of using VR footage in my tutorial videos. I will strictly stick to flat screen 2D video for that. But for some of these more casual missions like this flight here, it's nice to be able to fly them in VR, and unfortunately the track files just aren't reliable enough for me to go back and watch them on the monitor later and record it that way instead. But like I said, let me know uh, what you guys think, and we'll go from there. Now that's enough of me for now. I hope you guys enjoy the flight, and I'll catch you next time. Alright, start feeding in collective. Get ourselves light on wheels. Got a bunch of fuel, but nothing else, so we should be fairly light. Shouldn't need too much collective here. And then up we go. Now we're headed off that way. Ha! <laughs> I love when these come up, because it gives me some idea of what other people on the server are doing. People crashing in Heinz, and then uh, a Huey goes to rescue them, and then the Huey just left the server or something, or reslotted. Ten survivors. I mean, at that point, you basically need to have a hip to go and rescue them all. Alright, so now that we're up, let's jump over here. Have a good flight, Professor Chaos. You bet I will. Alright, we're going to fly through town. And then we're going to start looking for ways to move in the general direction of 177 towards our destination without flying up and over mountains. I don't really want to get up there. And in this weather, that's not really a wise idea. Um, the plan is to stay low to the ground, right? So the plan is to stay where I can see the ground and just kind of weave my way through mountain passes. And the most reliable way to do that is going to be to follow the road. So I know there's a road just up here on this hill. 
Um, right now I'm just following the river, but I'll meet up with the road just up here. follow the road then we should be able to find a path the only downside is if you know this road never ever goes through the mountains in the direction I need I could waste a whole lot of time and just end up at a dead end the other thing is the power lines when we're that low to the ground watch for the towers because you can't see the cables I really shouldn't be this low, but, I mean, it's enjoyable. It's fun, right? And if you're not having fun, what are you even doing? So, like, you know, right now my course indicator is telling me I need to take a hard left, but the road is telling me no. So I'm going to follow the road, and I'm not going to crash into a tree. And I'm going to try to find a junction in the road that takes me in the direction I want, even if I end up several kilometers off course. Trim often. Just follow this through town. I don't know, I really enjoy this sort of navigation, just following landmarks and... The Caucasus map is not necessarily the best for it because, like, you look at the houses and there are a lot of repeats. You know, there's not a lot of unique landmarks to follow. It's not like the Syria map where you've got a shit ton of unique, distinct landmarks that you can navigate by. Here, because of the age of the map, it's not really as easy. Oh, here we go. There's a left turn that gets us pointed kind of where we want to go. Hard bank. This is why I didn't do so well in the VIP missions in the crew campaign. Because I don't really think twice about banking hard as, you know, without a really concern for it. And in the VIP missions, you're not supposed to do that because you've got passengers who are sitting in comfy chairs back there. And if they're suddenly falling forwards out of said chair, that's not super awesome for them. Alright, so this is the direction we want to go, and we're being brought to this nice little lake here. Maybe we can follow the road around the lake. Some power lines up ahead. I'm going to do a stupid thing and go underneath them. It's one of those things I love about DCS, you know, ultimately just being a video game, is do stuff like this that you would never get away with in real life. And even if, you know, you screw it up and you blow up, oh well, just try it again. So there's room for both, right? There's room for practicing real-world procedures, following real-world guidelines, doing everything by the book. And there's room to also screw around and try stuff that you'd never do in reality. Abandoned UH-1H. Cool. So somebody... Uh, the abandoned ones are from people who switched slots or left the server. There's a few of them here. Wow, yeah. Um, okay. That's a lot. Anyway, I'm not interested in picking up people today, so those abandoned people are just going to have to wait. Now what's really cool is that they added car crashes to these servers, at least to the Syria one. Um, so now when you're flying around, or maybe it was to this one. Yeah, it was to this one. They added car crashes. So when you're following the roads, you'll find places where cars have collided. 
And so there are survivors from the car crashes to go and rescue, so it's not just, like, crashed helicopters or random stranded people in the bush. I think that's a... The car crashes thing is a far more believable reason for why you might have to rescue people out here. I think it was really cool. It was an awesome little addition. Now this is neat. I love following these roads through the forest. And they're so easy to lose, right? If you're not right over top of them, they just disappear. So there's three places right down there and like two more off in the distance up there. Where it looks like, I don't know, maybe people failed to rescue, maybe those are car crashes, I'm not really sure, I didn't catch them as they scrolled by. But this would be, you know, this would be a good place to have a car crash, right? A realistic, convincing place for it. There's some people down there that need rescuing. And the fun part is, in a rescue like that, where it's uh, on a hill, it's forested, you can't land really, you're going to end up with people who make it an attempt to rescue and then also crash. And so now you've got the original rescue plus the downed helicopter to rescue. That aspect of this being multiplayer, just, you know, versus a single player thing with random generated missions, makes it a little more dynamic and kind of fun because you can go rescue yourself or your friends or whoever else. Alright, so passing through another town here. And it looks like we want to head that way. We're just going to find a way through the mountains without going up and over. So follow the roads. There's the road, and then there's this uh, hill crest here with two little breaks, one larger, one smaller. So that's somewhat unique is remembering where we crossed. The road's just over there on that side of the power lines. Power lines are another good indicator to follow. You can see them a bit better than the road sometimes. And in general, power lines will take you to people. All right, so up and over, there's the road. We'll join up with that again. And this is interesting. So there's our road down there. And it looks like it's just winding its way down over there. And out directly ahead of us, okay. So let's start our descent. So we know we have the switchbacks down the hill. We're coming into what looks like this great big valley here, which is pretty cool. And a little river with a bridge leading into the switchbacks. Looking for unique landmarks to make sure I know how to get back out here. 
the same way. Not much in terms of, like, buildings that are unique. There's a, an apartment block or something up there that's a bit taller than the rest, but, oop, wires, hello. Alright, so let's have a look. Where are we exactly? We have 14 kilometers, 13 and a half to go, and we are 8 kilometers right of course. So we need to come left by about 8 kilometers, which we're slowly doing. So basically we just want to zero out both of these two numbers here. So we'll come left to zero out that 8km to the right. And we'll keep going forwards to zero out the 13. And when we do both of those things, in theory, we've arrived. to go, so we should be basically in visual range here sometime soon. So I'm starting to scan around. Should, in theory, be right off the nose. Um, and I'm looking for something that is hand-placed. So items that don't appear naturally in the map. And this map likes to use those giant pylons, like the racing pylons. And they also like to use factories, so like smokestacks are a good giveaway. Uh, but definitely those pylons if we see them. And I don't really know where to expect them. Four kilometers to go, and it'll be somewhere over here perhaps. Hey, there they are. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, one kilometer to go. There's the pylons, right down there, with the factory, and our landing pad. So, let's jump to the left seat. Which way do we need to be facing for landing? That way. Okay, so we're going to loop around to the left. And start slowing ourselves down. We don't need to be going 200 kph anymore. There's our pad. Our approach this way is not wonderful. If we extend it out to the right a little bit here, we can get over the trees and then come in that way. 100 kph is good. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll get ourselves over the river and the trees. Keep that speed up. Start descending. Now we can start to bleed that speed. It's transverse flow, bring in collective, bring in collective, bring in collective. And a little more, a little more, and we're stopped. We can let the nose come down just a bit. And then we can reduce collective nice and slow. Set down, right wheel, left wheel, nose wheel. We're down, brake. 
set trim for takeoff so that we're roughly stable here. All right, we're down. So now we're going to spawn some cargo. So F10. And we go into, there's a whole bunch of options here. So like there's cargo status if you're picking people up. Closest missions, closest bases. This is how I found where we were going. Spawn new mission. If there's nothing around, you can spawn new missions. Although I found lately there's like a there's plenty usually. Um, rope length, we're not doing that. So transport, that's what we're doing today is transport missions. And then we can do internal cargo. You have the choice. Or you can do sling load cargo, which now that it works, we are so doing this. And we have options depending on what you're flying. You know, if you're in a, <clears throat> excuse me, in a Huey, you probably wouldn't want anything heavier than one of these. In theory, the Huey could carry this one. It can carry a couple thousand pounds, which is thousand kilograms. Um, but you'd be pushing it. You know, if you like your Huey on fire, then that's a great way to go. With the hip, this is fine. We're going to take 4,000 kilograms. We, we can take more than that. We can lift 5,000. Although, that's really pushing what we can do at altitude, especially if we need to be climbing a lot. But 4,000 with a civil loadout like this, and... Oh, we still got lots of fuel, but that's okay. 4,000 kilogram crate. This will be just fine at our 12 o'clock. There it is, right down there. A the little Huey basket. It's kind of a shame that it's not heavier or bigger or something. It's the same cargo, regardless of weight. Not the dev's fault at all, just... You don't have a whole lot of options. You don't have an option for a big net. Just a little one. Alright, so, for sling loading cargo, we go through our radio menu, go to all cargoes on F6. I love this. I chose the perfect name for today. Professor Chaos Medical Supply, number two. Break off. We're more or less into the wind, so I'm not too worried about that. Up we go. All right, now as we hover off of the pad, we're gonna sink a little bit, and we're gonna need some extra collective to stay in the air. Because we're gonna, our ground effect is dropping away from us. Our crew chief has given us directions. And then once we're in position, he'll hook up for us. So then all we need to do is just come on up. And if we had good trim for hover, then it's... There we go. Okay, line is tight. What's our altitude? About 20. So before I pick up that cargo, let's adjust this down to about 30. Now before I break the cargo, let's go. All right, start bringing in collective and right pedal, nice and slow. Load in one meter of the ground. Load's coming up. Load in tank this thing has so much power. It's amazing. Now, we need to get high enough that our 20 meters of slinged cargo, or slung cargo there, isn't going to strike a tree or a building or a smokestack or a power line or something. Um, we also need to be up high enough that we can, you know, climb over mountains and so on, right, as we go. Uh, so, let's get up to somewhere around 100 meters. That should be plenty. And then we'll try to maintain about 100 meters. All right. I'm actually climbing a little more than I need to right now, so we'll bring that back down. Alright, yeah, those are the mountains. So those are where we want to go. We want to get through the mountains over there. So we need to cross the valley and then follow it until we're about 10 kilometers right, of course.
there's our bridge, yep, yeah, and there's our switchback. So here we are in the right place. We need to get up and over, so let's start our climb now. We should have started a while ago. Don't want to lose too much speed, but we also don't want to pull too much collective if we can help it. Now, really, I should probably be slinging a bit slower than this. I should probably be keeping my speed somewhere in the 130 to 150 range, or maybe even below that with this kind of weight. 100 to 120, somewhere around there. Sometimes it's fun to just ignore that and uh, go a little faster. Well, this is a pretty view. So there's that lake, and there's our bridge up there. Getting a little close to those trees with the sling. That's too close for comfort. My bad for paying more attention to what's up ahead instead of what's below me. It's really cool how detailed and how deep the simulation for this is. You know, hospitals have a capacity for patients, they have supplies, factories produce the supplies, and when hospitals run out, you need to do what I'm doing right now, head to a factory somewhere, get the supplies, bring them to a hospital. And then if a hospital has too many people or not enough supplies, they can't help people, and you can also transport people from hospital to hospital to one that has capacity or has supplies. So it's not just log on and rescue people from places where they're stranded, but also managing the whole economy of the hospital, both in terms of patient count and supplies. And so that opens the door for these cargo missions, which is really cool. Now this is like, I can't see. <laughs> I can't see much of anything, really. I know that from memory where I'm going is basically dead ahead up the hill. But yeah, I'm sort of in the clouds a little bit here. I'm a little higher than I need to be, but I don't want to smack the sling load on anything. <laughs> and I know that I need to climb too, so I don't want to start that too late. I want to make sure I'm leaving myself plenty of power and plenty of time to climb up that hill without losing too much speed. So I can do a lot of it just with cyclic, just by... Um, bringing the nose up just a little, and I'll bleed off some of my speed, sure, but, like, I've got lots, you know, I'm 165 kph here. And so if I can bring the nose up and climb at 150 versus flying level at 200, well, that's fine. I just want to be careful how much collective I'm asking for. So there's those three, well, it looks like two. There should be a third one crashes on the switchbacks, and there's my power lines up there, so I know I'm on the right track. i jump over here and have a look. I'm actually doing alright. I'm basically just above cruise power. And gas generator, so that's really good. I'm doing well. Um, let's jump back over here. Temperatures look okay. Pressures are good. Yeah, we're alright. Engines are pretty healthy.
I'm going to actually jump over to this seat for now. Keeping an eye on that speed. 100 kph is about as low as I want to go. So at that point, if I'm not climbing fast enough, I need to start bringing in more collective. Being careful how much power I'm asking for, because I'm up above nominal already and getting close to takeoff power. Rotor RPM is good, engine RPM is good, temperatures, pressures are good. No WCs. Three dudes, top feet, WCs are out. All right, so we can go up, and then we can follow. Right down here is our lake, so that's good. I got up and over without too much trouble, but now I don't want to be this high because I can't see anything. So we're going to start bringing that collective back down. Hello, friend. I would honk my horn if I could. I should blink my lights or something. Just be a way to say hello. I don't have SRS installed right now because I had to reinstall Windows. I just haven't gotten around to reinstalling SRS, so I can't actually talk to anyone right now. Car crash at Katice West. Yeah, well, I don't need to do that. Um, I am busy with supplies. Oh, hey, there's our tower. So, yeah, there it is. Okay, I'm flying right over it. All right, so we're going to loop around to the right. Now, this is a very me thing to do. I get busy talking and I'll drive right past my destination, or miss my turn, or whatever. Uh, so we're gonna just loop around, which is actually fine, we need to come in from the other direction here anyway, so. 
And we're going to set it on that pad right down there. Not the ones we spawned on, but just above that, straight up from it. There's a single solitary pad. That's the hospital. And we're going to go and set the cargo down there. There's our big tower up there. And then here's the hospital, that big building right there. And there's the pad dead ahead. So I won't be able to just come in and just drop it off. I'm not going to be able to do that uh, because of the obstructions, the trees, the buildings, everything else here. The plan is going to be to basically come to a hover over the pad and then just slowly descend my way down and just take my time. So I could come down lower than this still, but I really don't want to risk smacking the cargo. All right, as I descend, that's fine. I still have the speed. I'm going to overshoot this a little, and that's okay. Uh, we're getting almost into transverse flow. Start shaking, bring in that collective now. Nice and slow, nice and slow. It's fine if I climb a little. Still want to slow down. More collective, more collective, more collective. And even once I kind of fully stop, then I need that extra little bump of collective. Then I can assess. All right, so... Altitude looks good. I'm coming down slightly. We're in a hover. We are roughly where we want to be. Let's have a look outside. Get this hover a little better. That's not bad. Alright, so the trick here is spend some time on the hover and the trim. The more stable you are in your hover, the less input you need, like it should be fingertip flying. I've got two fingers on the cyclic and my thumb and that's all. And I'm just making very, very minor corrections here. And that gives me the stability to do this without getting super disoriented and entering PIO, pilot induced oscillation. So once I'm roughly where I want to be, now I'm just going to reduce collective very slightly. 4,000 kilograms is a heavy load. It's going to drag me down. And I should be trying to keep my rate of descent at 1 to 2 meters per second. And then I can periodically look out there. That's the cargo view binding, by the way. Keep an eye on vertical descent. Bring that back. So now I can bring myself back a little bit. And you can use all kinds of different reference points for this. You can use roads below you, trees, things in the distance. And just build a sight picture of where these things are in relation to, say, your door frame or a pedo or whatever, the icing detector, I think that is. And then use that to know whether or not you're moving in the right directions. So I'm using the road down there in relation to the position of my door frame to know that I'm moving backwards. And once it's at the front of the, or the window frame here, once it's at the front of it, I can check again, and I'm in a good spot here. So now I don't need to keep doing that. I can, there we go. And at some point soon here, once I get down to about 40 meters, maybe a little more, I should start getting call-outs from the crew chief. There we go. 20 to ground. Watching that vertical descent, I want to really minimize that now. One meter per second or less. I need to back up just a little, so I'm using the light post in the tree back there. It's a frame of reference. There, now, how's that? Well, that's better. And then we can just lower this down. Oh, that's a little disorienting. Okay, once you're on the ground, you need to drop your collective considerably. And then you can release the cargo. Because once you take that weight off the underbody of the helicopter, hey, I've successfully delivered 4,000 kilograms of supplies. 71, 900 meters, so 70 kilometers, 72 kilometers. It's quite a distance. 
Um, but yeah, once you drop that cargo, once it's on the ground and you take that weight off the underside of the helicopter, you've got more collective than you need now, a lot more. And so you're gonna start to climb. And so you need to bring that collective down smoothly, but you know, a significant amount. Now the cargo disappears as soon as it gets dropped off. So it's safe for us to land here if we want to. Break on. And then like there are medical transport missions available here that we could do. Um, we could also just go and do emergency missions again. We could go back and get more cargo. Really it's kind of up to us what we want to do at this point. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's sling loading on the SAR server. I quite enjoy it and that was a fun little trip of 70 kilometers through the mountains trying to make sure I can figure out where I'm going following the road. It's probably one of my favorite ways to fly is just VFR following roads through mountain passes. I, I like that a lot.